Yeah, what's up YouTube? Hope you all are doing great. Now you can see right here we have a cool project. This is a great animation bar and you can use this for so much stuff. You can use it as a sidebar. You can also use it for some navigation on your website. So you can see right here we have it when we click on it the background changes. You can see the cool animation. We've made this with SVG, added some CSS to it and also added some JS to make all these buttons active. If you're new to the channel, my name is Sam and I do projects like this and even more. Subscribe to the channel and like the vid guys and you know what, let's get to it. Yeah, so the first thing we start is we would start with a menu. And this menu will give it a class of menu. Yeah, let's not make it too complicated. And inside here we'll have a button. And the button will have a class name of class menu underscore item. And then we'll also add an active to it. And this is later for the, I just want to get it done with. So we'll add an active to it. Now inside here, we're going to have an SVG and I have the SVG right here. Just gonna copy and paste it because I'm literally writing the SVG, uh, it's gonna take too long. So this is the SVG we have right there, and that's all for that button. And when I'm just gonna copy this, copy the button, paste it, remove this SVG. And now we paste the second SVG. And we do the same thing again. Just gonna copy it and remove this SVG because the SVGs are different. So we remove this and then I'll paste the other one. You're going to paste it right there. So this is the third one. You can see the difference, how it's looking now. Copy, paste, remove this so we can put the fourth F SVG. And we're going to have five. Now we paste this right there. Copy again, paste, remove this. Now we add the last SVG for, for the buttons inside the menu. Now we add the last SVG for the buttons inside the menu. And you can see it right there. So now after the buttons, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a div with a class of menu border. And after that, we'll have a div with SVG dash container. And inside this right here, we'll put the last SVG.
and if you have any questions please leave them down in the comments below i will answer you yeah so we need to make sure this menu right here so this svg container right here should be outside the menu so that's why this should be there just to make sure so you understand and yeah that's it for the html now let's get to the css we will come back to the html to add some other things like some background colors and another thing for the buttons is that we need to remove this dot active because we don't want everything to be active we want just the first icon to be active so that's when you reload the page it's always going to start with that then we'll add an event listener that when you click on each different bar or tab then those will become active but we start with the first button as the active one so basically like the home button yeah so i removed it now you can see the only one with active is the first button now for the css we'll start with html and the html will do some box sizing for border box and also add a bg color menu that's gonna be hash one d1 d27 and also duration because we have some animation on this so we're gonna set the value for duration to be 0.6 seconds now we'll say html then we'll put this star which is a selector say html and then we'll say star before And just do the same HTML star after. Now we say box sizing. I want it to be inherit. Okay, so now we can start with the body. For the body, we'll give it a margin of zero. As add a display flex. Add a height of 100 VH. And also just add an overflow of, because there will be some overflows and yeah, I just want to get that over with. Add an overflow of hidden. Align items, not align content. Align items of, I'll make that center. These are the sidekicks. Justify content, the sidekicks of display flex. We can see it's moving now. Center. And also we'll add a background color. We'll give it a background color of FFF B4 five seven. You can see this kind of orangish color. And we can say also WebKit. tab highlight and color I'll say transparent We're gonna come back here to add some transition, but for now we'll leave it. 
now we set up menu. Give it a margin of zero pixels. Add a display flex too. And then we add a width. We'll add a width of 32.05 M. And also a font size. Of 1.5 M. Also gonna add a padding of zero and then two point eight five M and also position of relative and a line item. of center and also justify content of center. And I'm going to add a background color. I'll use the one we already created and that's why we're using the var. Say BG, the one right here. PG color menu. So now we just need to copy it and paste it right here. Yep, and we can see it right there. So now we've colored the menu. The next is the menu item. Set up menu underscore underscore item. Uh, let me just check the HTML real quick to make sure, yeah, it's not capital. So we'll add all and we'll say on set. Add a flex grow of one Z index. 100. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And you're seeing it now. It's coming to life. Add a display flex. I'm going to actually have a tutorial on Flexbox because it's so important. Um, of course, a pointer. So when we do this, we get this, we get that pointer. Position of relative add some border radius because come on, what's CSS without some nice border radius? Fifty percent now we had the sidekicks align item. center and then we'll add this wheel change which we're going to set to transform and then we add the justify content of center and for sure add some padding of 0.55 m 55 M zero zero no zero point eight five M and we will add some transition here but later now the next thing is to do dot menu underscore item 
before. And I will say content. Like that. Two quotes there. Add some Z index. Negative one. Give it a width of 4.2 M. Also give it a height of 4.2 M. Add a border radius. of 50% and also a position of absolute. So we add a position of absolute. Then we also add transform and put the scale of zero. And we will add a transition later on. So next thing is dot menu. The score item dot active. You know we had the first one active. And yeah, I'll say before. Let's say transform. And we still have the JS to actually add the functionality for the active. I'll say scale the one and the background color of our BG color item. Yeah, and this is gonna be BG color item. I'm sure you're asking, oh, what is this color item? Well, we're gonna create it now. And we'll go back to the HTML to get that done. So now we'll go to this HTML. I'm just going to copy this BG color item. Copy it. And in the HTML, in the HTML, what we're going to have is we're going to just do a style. We're going to do a style and we'll say BG color item. Put this. And we set it to this color right here F8. See, because you saw that actually the background changes whenever we click on any tab. So basically, what we're doing here is we're setting the different colors for each tab. Just copy this and we go to the next button. The only difference is that we'll change the color itself. That's the same practical format. It's the same name BG color item. And this is why we're not doing it in the CSS because we want it to be different for each tab. So five four eight eight eight. And the next button gonna be four 
three four four three four three five four F four <laughs> F five Next button is E zero B one one five and the last one is six six five D D B seven. Yep, so that's it for there. And now we get back to the CSS. Now it's time to now it's time to style our SVG icon. So we we'll say dot icon because our SVGs have a dot icon class. We'll give it a width of two point six M and the height of the same thing two point six M. Give it a stroke of white. And the fill of transparent. You can see the change there. Now we're gonna add some different stroke, stroke width. of one PT at a stroke the stroke meter limit we can see that it's getting closer to what we want it to be of 10 a stroke line cap of round and a stroke line join of also round. And then the last one is the stroke dash array of 400. Now we're going to check the menu underscore items item dot active dot icon. I want to add an animation of stroke. So 1.5 seconds reverse the next thing we add a keyframe at keyframe at keyframes we'll call it stroke I'll just say 100% stroke dash offset set that to 400 
Now we add dot menu underscore border. Set left to zero. Bottom to ninety nine per cent. Give it a width. of 10.9 M and also a height of 2.4 M. And I'm sure you're seeing the difference. You see when it reloads that actually is having the animation because it's the active one. at a position of absolute so it's not looking like the way it is right now and also a clip path of URL hash menu add a wheel change so transform a background color of our BG color menu. Now we can add some transition to it. And we'll add some transition to the other ones we have. Transform. Var. Timeout. And also var duration. double duration. Now let's start the SVG container and give it a width of zero and the height of zero. Just gonna add a little media query instead inside and we're done with the CSS and max width 50m and then we say the menu so font size dot eight M yep so we're seeing it looking really great just gonna copy this trend this transition right here and for the before after the skill I'm gonna paste it right there and just change some stuff inside it's going to be background color instead of transform and this is going to be var duration close it then instead of uh, it's going to be transform here. And 
and here we're going to add it paste it there and yeah this is going to be the same Yep, I'm just going to copy this right here. And paste it there. Background color var duration. Close it with a semicolon. And yeah, that's all the transition we need to add. And that's it for the CSS. Now it's time for the JavaScript. to finalize this project right here. I'm just going to put here use strict because I want this to be executed in strict mode. And we can see the animation is working. Anytime it reloads, you can see it. That's what I want to happen. But now we need to actually add it for the button so it's a constant body is equal to document dot body and now we say constant not console constant bg color bg colors body set them equal to an array of all the colors we use or we want to use so say hash ffb457 and then hash ff96bd Put the quotes around it. And then hash nine 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 four nines FB. Then hash FF E seven nine seven. Put the quotes around. I also hash CFFF. So four Fs and then a one. And yep, that's it. Now say constant menu is equal to body dot query selector dot menu and now we also say constant menu item or menu items is equal to menu dot query select all query selector all because we have different menu items. So we want to query select all of them, underscore item. Yeah, and I'm just gonna copy this and change some things inside. This is menu border, because we have a menu border too. Query select not all, just selector 
and it's going to be underscore menu border. And now we say let active item go to menu the query selector dot active now we say function click item I'll give it an, uh, two arguments of inputs item and index now we say menu dot style dot remove property and that is the timeout and then we say if active item is equal to item return Then we also say if active item then active item dot class well, class list dot remove active. If you have any questions, guys, leave them down in the comments below. Now we say item dot class list dot add active. Now we've added the active. We say body the style the background background color is equal to bg colors body now we use the argument index I'll say active item is equal to item. Now is the offset menu border. And we're going to create this function right here. Just going to put it there now so we can create it. Offset menu border active item and menu border and what we're going to do is we're going to create this offset menu border because we are adding some animations and it has to do with a click and the way the animations actually work we need to do some calculations so function offset menu border and as its arguments we have element and also menu border and after that we'll say constant offset active item is equal to element 
dot get bounding client correct now we say constant left is equal to math the floor say offset active item dot item dot left minus menu dot offset dot offset left minus menu border dot offset width minus offset offset active item dot width Now it's divided by two. Plus PX. And I will say menu border. Dot style. Dot transform. Is equal to use a string literal translate 3d and then the curly brackets left zero zero Now we say offset, offset menu border, and yeah, we'll call the function, say active item and menu border. Now we say menu items dot for each. Hope you know how to use for each. If you don't know how to use for each, check out my higher functions tutorial. I'll leave a card above. Check it out. For each. And then we'll say item and index. Then we we'll use our ES6 arrow. I also explained that too in the higher functions video. Say item. dot add and what we're doing the for each we're iterating add event listener or say click click item item index and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a window and add an event listener to the window dot add event listener say resize Now we say offset menu border, say active item menu border, 
and then we say menu dot style dot set property now we say timeout and also none yep that's it so now if we click on here we can see that everything switches perfectly and yep that's what we wanted from this project if it reloads like now if i click it it reloads you see we always start from here even if it's here if i click something and it reloads you can see it starts from here because this is the active one and then we can click to the other different i can see the cool animation possible with the svg and our css styling and our keyframes and yep hopefully you enjoyed this project if you did please like subscribe to the channel if you're new and yep i'll be doing more of this more cool projects like this and yeah that's it for now i'm gonna wrap things up and i'll keep things moving and i'll see you all in the next youtube video